student of mine has um, sent me a dream and uh, she's wondering how to interpret it. The dream went as follows. I dreamt of a sickle the night before. I stumbled upon the Mitra's temple. When we tuned in to the golden ank, I saw an old man with a white cloak, hooded and bearded, but no face to be seen. In his right hand, a straight wooden stave. I thought of a druid, or perhaps the hermite, like in the tarot. He came visiting me in a meditation on my birthday, and I saw him leaving with a smaller version of myself, like a child. I did wave myself goodbye. After that, he was very present in my mind. Something like, meditate on me. Which I didn't really dare. Do you have any idea who or what this is? Jesus? So it's a very interesting dream. So the dream starts with the sickle. And the sickle is a very important symbol, of course, in, uh, in Druidism. Um, the sickle also represents uh, the crescent moon. And the moon is very much the, the feminine, um, also the receptive side of, our, uh, of ourselves. So there is an inspiration, but there is also the part of us which needs to be able to catch the inspiration, which needs to be ready to receive the information. We have to be, in a way, fertile to receive these spiritual impulses. So the first part of the dream, dreaming of the sickle, is in a way dreaming of your own fertility. And in this case, it's a spiritual fertility that you're in a way receptive and ready to receive these higher impulses and also to act upon them, to have them bear fruit. The next part of the dream is about stumbling upon a Mithras temple. Um, the structure of a Mithras temple is also a very interesting structure. Uh, Mithras temples are built underground. Um, so in a way symbolically they represent a cave going into the earth. But often the roof of such a Mithras temple would be um, painted blue and might have different stars or signs of the zodiac upon it or different planets upon it. So it is both in the earth as it is in the cosmos, in the heavens. So the Mitzvah's temple was very much, um, you could say, a joining of being in the earth and also being in the cosmos. Also in the Mitras cult, uh, the deity of Mitras was seen as fighting a bull. And, of course, uh, people are nowadays wondering, fighting a bull, why would one fight a bull? But many people are more familiar with the Christian form of it, St. George, who was fighting a dragon. The bull is very much a symbol for the, uh, the raw power, the chaotic power uh, of instincts, of nature. And the dragon is in a way very similar in, uh, in symbolism. So it shows our animalistic side and how the uh, man or god uh, conquers the bull is in a way um, um, indication to us that we can and should master our emotions, our instincts. Um, that we should learn how to discipline ourselves so that we can harness the power of the bull instead of be a slave to the power of the bull. In the imagery of Mitras, Mitras is fighting the bull, but he's not looking at the bull, he's looking at the sun. And the sun stands for the highest inspiration. 
So this is very much the light of the divine or the light of our own soul, our own spirit, which is helping us to guide us to take control of these powers of the bull and also to use them in a good sense. So the vision of first seeing the sickle and then finding the Mitra's temple is showing that you are ready to start working with these emotions, with these instincts, under the guidance of Mitras, the sun. The next part of the dream, when we tuned in to the golden ankh. So the ankh is very much um, <coughs> the life force within the Egyptian religion. And the angs were seen as life force, as emanating from the sun. So the sun aspect comes back. So it is not the sun as the deity or the planet itself, but actually the radius from the sun. So these are the impulses which lead us to wisdom, strength, harmony, beauty. Uh, all these inspirations which create development on earth. And this is what you tune into if you tune into the ankh. Continue. When we tuned into the golden ankh, I saw an old man with a white cloak, hooded and bearded, but no face to be seen, in his right hand a straight wooden staff. White is often a symbol of purity. <coughs> can also be um, a symbol that something is not yet um, touched by fate. So there is a kind of a freedom there. It has not been set into a certain motion or into a certain pattern yet. So this is generally this symbolism of white. White can also be destructive as well as purifying. Because of course if everything is destroyed then also everything is purified. He is hooded and bearded, but no face to be seen. So here again we have the anonymity, the emptiness, which is represented by the hood. There is not yet a character to the future. The future is not set in stone. It is rather a potential which is being offered. The staff or the spear or the lance, they're actually symbols for the tree of life, the, or the Jacob's ladder in the Christian tradition. The connection between all parts of the cosmos, both high and low, with each other. And the staff is also very much a symbol of authority, like the scepter of a monarch. It shows that it is you're communicating with the Most High, but also communicating with the most low, that you are in a way communicating or bear the authority of a greater power, of a higher power. So this could be a divine power, it can also be your own spirit or your own soul, which gives you this authority to master your own emotions or your own instincts, the power which lies within the earth or within your own body. Often the staff can also be a symbol of the power to make a body or the earth fertile, to let it bear fruit, to come into life. The next part of the dream, he came visiting me in a meditation on my birthday and saw him leaving with a smaller version of myself, like a child. The birthday is a very important moment because on the birthday when we take form in the world is also when we in a way assume all the energies from our solar system and condense them 
into the being we are. Very important part of the White Trust cult was also the initiation, whereby you learn to make every planet your ally. <coughs> then where you start to make allies of every part of your being, you in a way trying to attain self-mastery. And at the moment that we are born, or that we are a child, our spirit is the only influence. So the form we have is still pure and polluted by what happened to us, our mistakes, our failures, our sins, and the energies of the world. And that this power, representing a new birth, a new beginning, also authority, um, self-control in a way doesn't focus on who you became but rather on the pure you um, it could indicate that you're in a process of healing of restoration because we have a potential we try to develop it we do it inexpertly and therefore we tend to become a little bit twisted or damaged it can also mean that we're starting a new cycle, that in a way the spirit is in a way again forming a new energy body by learning how to master all these different planetary energies, all these different aspects of our own being. So it can be very much an invitation to go on this path of Mitraic initiation to take these seven steps to relate to the seven planets again and thereby free your spirit from the power these seven planets can have over us and make them once again your ally. I did wave myself goodbye. After that he was very present in my mind something like meditate on me, what I did not really dare. So this is also an interesting phase, because fear is always a result of our ego. Our ego is always afraid to die, and in a way every change, and of course the big change, death, is the end of the ego, but also every minor change every new job, place we live, place we work, uh, relationship is in a way death for the ego because parts of it have to make way to let go um, so that the spirit can build something new and releasing control is not something the ego is very good at so here the fear that you don't dare to meditate upon the hooded man and this hooded man is probably an image of your own spirit or perhaps of your uh, spirit guide it can also be an emissary from a deity or from uh, the creator even who's trying to move you onwards but it's very natural that there is fear involved in such a process in such a break with who you are, but also with letting go of the illusion of your past, of the world, of who you are. So my idea on who that is, I don't think that it would represent Jesus necessarily, but I do think it's probably in a way representing Mithras. And Mithras um, as you could say, another name also for the Messiah. The Messiah who liberates us from ourself, who teaches our spirit to be strong, who teaches us to be in harmony with the world around us. So Mithras, you could say, is a earlier Messiah than Jesus Christ. But also Mithras exists 
to set us free. Not yet, maybe to connect us to the Creator, but definitely to free us from our earthly bonds, to give us power over ourselves, so that we can follow our spirit and use the staff to make contacts both high and low, within and without. And by working with our inner cosmos and manifesting this inner cosmos into our temple, our own little cave, where we go to struggle with our own darkness, with our own primitive urges, but also where we go to relate to the powers of the heaven. So it's very important to work with this inner cosmos, I feel. And I think this is the message of the dream, to have this power of the inner cosmos. And once you have power of the inner cosmos, power over the outer cosmos will follow automatically. For to know yourself, it's also to know the universe. Because we are one, we resonate. So, I hope this interpretation has uh, provided you some guidance in how to continue as a result of your dream. A wonderful dream. Thank you very much for sharing it with us.